Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. Um, I hope you had a great day yesterday. It was so nice to hear from uh, those of you who shared your proud works. Um, it just, it's just so nice to be together during our community meetings. I hope you enjoy them as well. And it's clear that you're working hard at home, and I know it probably feels different, and you might you might wish you were back in the classroom, or maybe you're enjoying that working at home. But either way, I just encourage you to keep trying your best, to keep trying to challenge yourself a little bit each day. Um, and if you need absolutely anything from me, anything, a virtual hug, a camera pound, a few words of encouragement, maybe you need a brief presentation, a way to review something so it stops frustrating you. Um, know that I'm here for you. I wish I could be with you in person, but um, I will do the best that I can from afar. So the only way I can know that though is if you share it with me. So if you're feeling any of those things, please just let me know. All right, let's review yesterday's number talk. We had some fun word problems. Word problems are my favorite version, favorite way to practice math um, because it combines a story uh, with some work. So let me just get my camera placed properly. All right. So again, you probably remember yesterday I told you I was having some printer difficulties. They haven't changed. So here I have my green column, blue column, and red column, just like your sheet of paper as much as I was able to replicate it. So here in the green column, we had three story problems. One, two, and three. And here are all three of your answers. Um, we went false, false, and true. And I drew a picture to demonstrate how I solved each one and then set up the equation. You'll see this one was just two numbers being added. This one had three add-ins, and this one had four. Let's go ahead and check that work. Into our blue column, we had to set up some subtraction equations based on the story problems. So in this one, the answer provided was false because the difference in time was three minutes. The second one was also false because there were three worms remaining, also solved by setting up a subtraction equation. And lastly, the final answer was true, but also solved with a subtraction equation. All right, now making our way over to the red column. Um, our first answer was false. Um, this is one where you're practicing uh, your fractions and multiplication. So it was six cakes, each cake, so six total cakes. Each cake was cut into eighths. So each cake has eight parts. So six times eight is 48 pieces. And I believe the answer was 42, hence why it's false. So I didn't draw this because it was gonna be really large, but you might have drawn out the cakes and divided it into its fractions. Our next answer was true. It was four Granny Smith apples cost $2. If I buy 12 of them, how much does it cost? So four costs two, another four costs two, and now I'm at four, eight. Another four would cost two dollars, and now I'm at 12. So two plus two plus two is six, or two times three is six. So that answer was true. And then the final one, um, I think it involved families and pizzas. The family made five pizzas, cut each pizza into fourths, so five pizzas, each one has four parts, so five times four, 20 slices in all. Again, you could have drawn that picture, the circle, divided it into its uh, fraction parts. Um, I just didn't do to space. So there are your answers. Um, I will get out of the way. And if you want to pause the video and just check, go ahead and do so. If this felt confusing to you and you want to review, you just got to let me know and uh, we'll find a time to do it together, okay? Right on. Now the number talk for Wednesday is some subtraction. We have some um, 
finger chart subtraction. Uh, it's work it out Wednesday, so we're just going to practice, practice, practice. What the brain practices, the brain learns. Uh, the blue column and the red column just are larger, more challenging ones. Um, use your materials if you need to. Use paper, pencil if you're at that point. Either way, do your best. Um, keep practicing and let me know if you need some assistance. All right, getting back to Confucius and the value of honesty. Um, yesterday's questions were about the characters and the setting. And if you recall, the first question was, who is the main character? Well, clearly our main character is Confucius. The second part of that question was, what do we know about the character? What do we know about Confucius? Well, we learned that Confucius valued honesty and integrity. We learned that Confucius became a teacher, both for children and adults. Um, Confucius traveled by foot great distances in order to teach in libraries or to large groups of people. He even became the governor of his province of Lu and led with a practice of honesty, which made the citizens more honest and everyone was happier in turn. Maybe we could learn a thing or two about that. And if we went back to the beginning of the setting, Sage told us that it took place in China about 2,500 years ago. 2,500 years ago. That is very long and quite remarkable when you stop to think um, that we're still talking about Confucius today, that many, many years ago. Perhaps your legacy will leave people talking about you 2,500 years later. All right, we're going to move into our final three story elements. The plot. Remember, the plot is the sequence of events that unfold in the story, beginning, middle, and end. So go ahead and identify those three and perhaps draw that picture. Remember, with the beginning, the middle, and the end. Um, for the plot, think about the part of the story where Confucius was going out in order to teach and he was mistaken for a bandit, a robber. Think about that and tell the, put what is the beginning, middle, and end of that part of the story. And when you're thinking of the conflict, think of the conflict or the problem from that small part of the story, from when he was mistaken for a robber and some things happened. And then at the end, what is the resolution? How was that problem solved? I also want you to think about just that small part of the story. So for these three, the plot, the conflict, and the resolution, think about that story within the story, all right? Go ahead and answer them in complete sentences if you are writing, or complete thoughts if you are articulating it and talking through it with a parent or a sibling. All right, and last but not least, yesterday, our biome <clears throat> was one that was covered with grass and shrubs. We learned there are temperate and tropical versions. The temperate ones are called prairies, plains, and meadows. Those are the ones we experience more in our area. Um, there are tropical ones called savannas. Maybe you've visited one or seen it on a video or something. Um, there's minimal rainfall in this biome, so natural fires occur, but it's actually good for these biomes. And the few trees that are found here usually die while the grass survives. If you identified this as a grassland, you were correct. Check out that camouflaged fauna in there, that camouflaged deer. All right, today's clue. This biome is near the North and South Pole. It is covered with ice for the whole year. This biome has a long, dark winter and a short summer. Where am I? Tune in tomorrow to find out, to review the story elements from Confucius, The Value of Honesty, and to review our Work It Out Wednesday. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. I'll see you at small group presentations. And know that you're awesome, and I miss you very much.